Hello all, I'm Anders, and today we're jumping right into it, as I'm starting a project I've been meaning to do for a while now. I've mentioned this a couple of times, but one thing I've never liked about the Angmar army list is generally they're reusing of models and profiles from other armies, as it just leaves the list without its own personality. I've really tried to give my Angmar army a real sense of style throughout this project, and so knew that having just a regular cave troll in it just wasn't going to work. So after exploring a bunch of different options, I decided nothing I was finding was going to work. So I guess I just had to make my own. And so I decided to sculpt my first ever mini from scratch. So fair warning, this isn't going to be an exhaustive how-to on sculpting a miniature as I'm no expert in that. And I more wanted to convey the essence of my journey and thought process throughout the project. Wow, that was pretentious. Can can I cut that out? And so, like all of my projects, we start with my sketchbook. I've done a lot of sketches here and there for how I want my trolls to look, as I want them to be distinct from the others in the Lord of the Rings range, and decided to call him a hill troll. I decided some specifics while I was doing this, like that I wanted him to have two toes, three fingers, and a distinctive nose. But then another concept came to me. If trolls turn to stone in the light, what if they can't find a cave? So I started thinking about them carrying around blankets and cloaks to cover themselves during the day to sleep, but that would probably leave them pretty exposed, so to camouflage maybe they attach branches and earth to the cloaks to blend into the surroundings. Think troll in a ghillie suit. And with that, we had our vision. So onto the actual sculpting. I first needed a handle to attach this guy to while I work and so I cut a length of 2x2 wood, which I then traced a 40mm base on top of so I could try and keep his footprint within it. For the material, I've decided to go with a roughly 70-30 to 30 mix of green stuff and milliput, as they work really nicely together. So I mixed up a chunk of this and roughly formed it into the shape of the torso, keeping some models nearby to help with scale, and then attached it to a toothpick and glued the whole thing to my handle. I also rolled out two small spheres and set those aside, so we'll, we'll come back to them. One of the biggest things I've learned watching sculpting tutorials and videos has been the importance of letting the material dry between steps. So since apparently green stuff doesn't do well in the oven, I made my own little curing station by taking an empty coffee container, one of the ones with the metallic inside, and placing the models in it, then sticking my lamp right over top. This still took quite a while to cure, but I definitely think it helped, and I got into the habit of sticking it in there after each sculpting session so it was ready for next time. Speaking of next time, once that was dry, I bent two pieces of wire, in this case paper clips, into the shape of his legs, being sure to make them roughly the same length, and drilling the holes into his body and handle to attach them to with a bit of super glue. Then I wrapped up the wires in my putty mix and let them dry again before moving on. With the structures there, I basically wrapped his legs in some thin sheets of putty and went to sculpt them into shape. Here's where I started really using my tools, so let's talk about them quickly. I've shown them off in previous videos, but I mainly use homemade sculpting tools that I've made from excess epoxy from other projects. My favorite being this one, which is a kind of spade at one end and a pointy point at the other. I do 90% of my work with this, and just lubricate it with a bit of water, and it works great. I really need to get around to gain some proper sculpting tools, but it just goes to show you that you don't need all that fancy equipment to do this stuff. So part of the reason I decided to troll would be a good first mini to sculpt from scratch is that, while it is humanoid, it's pretty big for the 28mm scale, and since it's a monster, if my proportions are a bit off, it doesn't really matter. But still, to make it look at least halfway realistic, you will need to take some anatomy into consideration. And here's where reference pictures really come in handy. Just searching anatomy reference on Google will give you tons of results to work from, but these will probably all be naked. So like, just be aware. However, in our case, since we're sculpting a troll, there's actually a lot of great references for that as well, a lot of which come from Weta themselves. For the feet, I actually used some pure green stuff to build his two little toes on each feet, covering this up with some of uh, my putty mixed afterwards for the skin. 
I'm not 100% sure why I did this, but I think it mainly just helps me to differentiate nail from skin, and it worked, so sounds good. The other fantastic thing with the Milliput and Green Stuff mix is that when it's dry, you can actually sand it. And so I spent a lot of time going back and forth, sanding and sculpting to get it where I wanted. Once I had his legs all nice and done, I felt like he was looking too muscular, and so I went in and gave him a nice big saggy belly, as I like the idea that my trolls are not bred for war, but just kind of wild treat creatures trying to get by. Speaking of which, I wanted to convey this in his weapon too, so each time I finished a session with some extra epoxy, I've been using it to sculpt the tree trunk, as if he just riffed the nearest tree out of the ground and used that to fight. With the lower body mostly done, it was time to do the arms. I hummed and hawed over the position and posed for a lot here, and even mocked up some arms with a head with some blue tack to get an idea. And once I was ready to go, I used the same technique as the legs to build up the structure. But before I went to build them up, I actually shaped up the hands, as I knew this would be a tricky one. For this, I basically made a bunch of little sausages and bundled them together to make the fingers before adjusting them to the correct position. Once I had these on the figure, I spent a lot of time pulling excess material off to get the sizing right, as even though he is a troll, I didn't want them to look too big. Then it was onto his head, and I rolled out a ball for his head, and roughly molded it into the shape before sticking it onto the body. Now, remember those two spheres from earlier on? Well, here's where they come in, as they're going to be his eyeballs. I basically squished these onto his head where I wanted the eyes to be, and set the whole thing aside to cure before working on. Focusing on the face, I started layering more thin sheets of putty onto it to build up the details starting with the eyelids and brow, before working onto his chin and cheeks. For his mouth, I actually just did a thin line of putty to act as a lower lip, and stuck a couple of toothpicks in to give him some big teeth or tusks. Then I was just repeating the same steps on the arms and neck as I did for the legs, and we're looking good. So I actually took my little pile of tools and spent some time outside, as it's been really beautiful here lately. And since we're out here, let's have a chat. I spend a lot of time in miniature groups on Facebook, as they're such a fantastic place for inspiration. Some of my favorite three groups are Wargaming in Middle-Earth, The Shire of Victoria, and The Dark Age of Sigmar, as I find there's just so much creativity and wild ideas on those. I feel like a lot of time we can limit ourselves creatively, focusing too much on what we think a troll or orc should look like, and debating exactly what creatures were around in a fantasy at what time. And while this kind of thing can lead to some amazing works, it can also once again be a bit limiting, I find. Especially with Tolkien. One of the strongest things Tolkien does, in my opinion, is how he knows when to go into detail and when not to. While so much of his work is meticulously laid out, just as much isn't, and feels like this is 100% by design. And I'm really trying to take that mentality to heart with this project, bringing in influences from as many different sources as I can to create something that I hope feels truly unique. But anyway, enough philosophizing. Back to the project. With all that done, the details were basically all there, and I just spent some more time sanding and fiddling to get it looking really good. Then the last step for my naked friend here is to add a ceiling coat to fill in a lot of the micro textures. I did this by taking a small chunk of milliput and mixing it into some water. This took a lot of work. As while Milliput is water soluble, it's one thing to have a bit of it run off in your hand due to water, and enough to fully dissolve a chunk. So I spent quite a while working this in, until I was left with a very thin mixture, kind of like a paint. And speaking of paint, I actually added a little bit of green paint to this, to help me tell where I had and hadn't applied it yet, and also to bring the final project closer to that classic green sculpted look you see in the uh, old magazines. And so I just painted this on, giving some sections more slash thicker coats to really get them smooth, and once that was dried, he looked great. The head's a bit big and he's very naked, but I'm honestly really happy with him just like this, and I almost don't want to add all the other details I have planned, but we're moving on.
I proceeded to roll out some thin sheets of green stuff and applied this around his body to create some clothes. I also rolled some really thin strips of green stuff before wrapping two of them together to create these kind of rough rope looking bits. And I used this as straps to hold everything on. From the very beginning I knew I wanted a troll with antlers, as I just love the look of the antlers on stuff like Fiends and the Leshen from The Witcher. But I had to decide, which ones? So I put it to my patrons, and they unanimously decided on the thinner ones that I actually got from the Baratheon activation banners from the Simon Song of Ice and Fire miniature game. So I stuck those onto his head, before then adding some big branches to his back that I actually clipped off the little plastic bonsai tree I got at the dollar store. This gave me a really fun and unique silhouette, and it also just made me think of the groans from the first other Hobbit movie adaptations. Seriously, if you haven't seen that, watch it now. I have links in the description, because it's wild. It was all destroyed by the monster lizard Slag the Terrible. Little Nasty has come to steal our ring, my precious. We must squeeze it till it dies, yes. We don't let it take our dearest ring, Gloom. Then we once again get back to some Witcher influences, adding stones and dirt to his back with super glue, like the stone trolls from the game. Then I added a few tops of grass, like I did with my orcs and barrel whites, and we're done. love this. He is my new favorite boy, and I will protect him forever. I can't wait to get painting him up, and I really want to make some more to go with him as I've got tons more ideas now. Another thing I thought about during the process was casting, as I don't think I could do that with him right now with all the added details, but if slash when I make another, I definitely will be thinking about that more realistically. So yeah, now I just need to pop him off his stand give him a base and paint him up so we can go into my army. Thanks again everyone for watching and supporting. If you want to see more pictures of this or my other projects, hop over onto my Instagram or even on my Twitter. As I don't post there a lot, but I do spend a lot of time there, so it's a good way of contacting me. Also a huge thank to my patrons, as they're always a fantastic support. I'm actually thinking of adding some few extra benefits to you guys, including a monthly painting competition and exclusive access to our bi-weekly stream archives. Oh yeah, speaking of that, we've been doing streams too, so come out next week to see us working on our city buildings. It's been a really fun, chill time so far. And so with that, I've been Anders, and we've been talking some hobby. So stay safe, have a good one everyone.